Hi, my name is Eric Postma. I'm Senior Software Architect for Mathematical Software at MapleSoft. And I'd like to talk about generating random numbers today, uh, in particular about generating them efficiently. But before I talk about the efficiency aspect, there's always one thing that I like to um, talk about whenever uh, I talk about generating ran random numbers in Maple, which is that they are um, reproducible. So what that means is I have here a session of Maple 18. And whenever you have a new session of Maple 18, the random numbers come out in the same order. Um, so the first one, if I just look for a, a random integer, um, will be um, about 3 times 10 to the 11. And then there's this number here as the second one. And if I now restart the maple kernel and I ask for random numbers again, I will get the same numbers in this order. Uh, the reason that this happens is um, that it's very easy if you're um, developing a piece of software um, or a simulation or anything like that to uh, um, have the numbers be predictable because if you run into any sort of problem you know how to reproduce the problem and um, if the random numbers are um, not predictable then you don't get that. Uh, it can be very hard to reconstruct the issue that you've just found. Um, now, of course, there are also situations where you really want numbers that are different. And in that case, what you can do is uh, use the randomize command. So you can give it an argument, in which case you set the random state to something. But if you don't give an argument, then the random state is derived from the clock. And um, now if I do rand, I get a different number. OK, so now that we have that out of the way, um, I'd like to talk about how to generate um, combinatorial or algebraic values. Uh, so Maple has a package called random tools. Uh, let's load that. Random tools. Um, and it contains uh, some commands uh, that, that make that easier. In particular, the most relevant one is the generate command. So what you can do is you can call generate and you tell it what type of random object you're interested in. Um, and this type of random object is called a flavor in the documentation. So for example, there exists an integer flavor. So we can say um, we're interested in generating a an integer um, and um, maybe from the range uh, minus 10 to 10 and we get 7 wonderful um, so that's great but it's not super interesting I mean what what makes this powerful uh, is that you can compose multiple of these flavors into um, what the documentation calls a structured flavor. So let's look up that documentation. Um, and what you'll see is that there's a whole list of types of things that you can generate. So um, in particular, for example, you can say, I want a list of some number of elements of a particular flavor and et cetera, et cetera. Um, and uh, here you can see a list of all the all the types that that you can you can generate. So, for example, um, to take that list example, if we want to create a list of um, integers uh, from the same range, um, and say of five such elements. And we can do that with this command. So here we have a list of five random integers between minus 10 and 10. So this is, by the way, a concept that we have in other areas of Maple as well. Uh, we have structured types and structured verifications, and there are help pages for those as well. Um, but so to continue with the um, random numbers, 
um, here is another example so you can um, generate for example a polynomial um, um, and so first you um, give the flavor used for the coefficients so maybe here we want to say um, each coefficient can be either a or b or c and then you give the variable and you can tell it what the degree is and there we have a fifth degree polynomial so there's a one wonderful feature for the generate command that is um, a little um, under documented maybe which is the make proc option and um, what you do with that is if you want to um, frequently generate some random structures according to a single flavor then you can use the make proc option to make a procedure and um, call that a number of times and so that saves a lot of pre-processing um, that maple would do otherwise so for example suppose we want to generate uh, a number of lists and they all have one integer chosen uniformly between minus 10 and 0 and one integer chosen uniformly between 0 and 10 so we can generate one such uh, list as follows we say generate integer range equals minus 10 to 0 and integer range equals 0 to 10. Um, now if you want to do this just once then this is perfectly fine but if you want to do this say 10,000 times then there's a bit of overhead in this in this pre-processing that I was talking about so, so we can measure the time that this takes as follows So we um, evaluate the time function at the start. We generate 10,000 of these lists, and then we evaluate the time function again and subtract the value at the beginning. Right? Um, so if we do this here on this machine, that takes 0.36 seconds. Um, but here's a trick. Um, if we take this and copy it and paste it here. Now what we can do is we can tell generate to create a procedure that does this. Um, as follows. By giving it the make proc argument and now what what generate does is it creates a procedure that um, generates this type of, of uh, random object and assigns it to the, the um, variable p and now we can just call p here in this loop and that will be um, a little bit faster so it's a couple percents um, a couple tens of percents. Uh, the timing will differ from machine to machine, of course, but this uh, is a bit more efficient. However, uh, as we'll see in a little bit, uh, these methods are great for convenience, but they're not particularly uh, efficient. Um, the best code for generating pseudo-random numbers um, is in the statistics package. Um, and in particular the sample command does that so let's load the statistics package 
And now the sample command, you specify a probability distribution or a random variable and the requested number of values, and then it creates uh, typically a vector and fills it with the generated numbers. So if we want to generate um, normally distributed random numbers, we can do that. This, and we will take three, and here we have three normal, uh, standard normal random numbers. Um, now a neat trick here is that if you have a random variable, you can generate samples of functions of that variable. So what I mean by that is if you say I have a, maybe a standard normal random variable, and now I can say um, take a sample of z squared of a thousand points. So what this does is it takes uh, a sample for z and it squares all the entries, right? That's pretty clear. Um, so if we take a, create a histogram of this sample, we'll see that it um, matches very well the distribution for a, um, a chi squared uh, distribution. Um, so in particular, we take this plot and we also show uh, the density plot for chi squared. We will see they match very well. And that's, of course, not a coincidence because um, this is one way to obtain a k square, a random variable. Um, okay, so now this is great if we want a um, larger number of, um, of values. Um, but if we want just a single value, it turns out um, well, one way that you can do that, of course, is to say, I want maybe this time uniform random variable, so uniform between 0 and 1. And if I want just one value, I can say I want a vector of length 1 and then take the first entry of that, right? So if I do just this, I get a vector with a number in it. And then I can say I'll take the first entry. And now I got just a number. But if you do this many times, then there is really quite a bit of overhead. In fact, there's so much overhead that we're going to try this with fewer points. So um, we do the same exercise as before, um, but now with a thousand points, um, we create this sample length one and take the first entry and then see how long it took. Now we'll see that this takes about three or four seconds and um, that's really um, all overhead because if we do the same thing um, without the loop but just create thousand entry sample and do that in one step, we'll see that this takes essentially no time at all. So this is all, all overhead. Um, the, th there is a, a wonderful way around this. Um, so one obviously is to just create a large sample and um, use entries from that one by one, um, but that requires a bit more programming on the on the user's um, uh, side. Um, a, a nicer way is to um, do the following, uh, essentially similar to the make proc argument that we saw in the previous 
um, uh, subject of, of using random tools, um, you can achieve the same thing uh, using the sample command by just omitting the um, number of values that you'd like to get. So we can say p con equals um, sample uniform 0, 1. Let's again do this in a time loop. Here to p, we give the size of the sample we want. Once again, we get a vector and we take the first entry. And um, now we see how long it took. Um, so this is much, much faster. Um, in fact, in this case, I'd be happy to um, do it 10,000 times so that we can get a reasonable time measurement. So as a final um, application, let's try and reproduce the um, 10,000 lists of two elements that we saw previously coming from the random tools package. Um, so what we had was 10,000 lists of two elements each, where the first was a uniform integer between minus 10 and 0, and the second was from 0 to 10. Now, the sample command can only generate vectors and matrices and arrays, not lists. So what we'll do is uh, generate a matrix of 10,000 by 2 and convert it to the desired list of lists at the end. Um, another thing is we can only supply a single uh, distribution to sample. But uh, what we just do is we... we generate uh, only the positive numbers and then we flip the sign of the first column um, and finally we need to make sure that the uh, values are actually integers so the the sample command always generates floating point values um, so we'll we'll fix that as well and this whole exercise is also to be timed so that we can compare it to the previous approach. So here is what we do. We record the time. And now we create our matrix. So we use the uniform distribution before. In this case, we want to use the discrete uniform distribution, which um, generates integer values albeit that they are represented as floats. Um, but they do not have a floating, a, a fractional part, so they are. Okay, so now we flip the sign of the first column. Uh, so we take the first column, and we say, we use minus the first column to, um, to fill this. And now we convert M to a matrix with um, integer entries. And finally, we convert this to a list of lists. And now we see how much time has elapsed. So if we do this, we see that this is uh, only 0 0.03 seconds, whereas when we did this using random tools, it was about 0.3. So this is about a factor of 10 faster. It's a little bit more work, but if you have a simulation that is time critical, it may well be worth it.